Hello and welcome back to the PHP 101 course. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation on object-oriented programming and in this video we're going to talk about something that's a little more complex uh, but not really. Uh, I find it a little more useful than our last video when we talked about interfaces. Uh, although uh, interfaces are useful, I think abstract methods give a little more flexibility and I'll show you why. So uh, let's go ahead now and let's just create a new file. So I'm going to close interfaces here. I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this abstraction.php and let's open some PHP tags. Skip down a few lines and close them. And let's say now that we have uh, a parent class and we're going to call this parent class um, structure. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say public, uh, well, no, I'm not. I'm crazy here. I'm going to say class. Sorry, it's very late. I'm trying to shoot a lot of videos in a row. So I'm going to say class, and we're going to call this class structure. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to say that anytime a structure is built, I want to set uh, an address. So let's give this thing a public property called address. By default, it's going to be set to um, an empty string, and I want to um, I want to when this is instantiated, I want to run the run the constructor. So public function underscore underscore construct, and we're going to pass in address when we construct this because we need to know where this thing's built. And when we do that, we're going to say this address is equal to address. The other thing that I want to do here, uh, well, yeah, we'll do it just like this. Okay, so now when I instantiate a structure, it's going to have an address, okay? But um, let's say, for example, uh, we want to have a function called uh, lock doors, okay? And this this method, what it's going to do? So let's let's give ourselves another uh, property here called uh, doors locked, and we'll set that equal to false. Uh, and that needs to be a dollar sign. So doors locked is false. So um, we have a public function called lock doors, but Let's say that um, every structure has different doors. And so the way that we have to lock these doors, there's different amounts of code involved in doing that. So we might have 15 doors on one building, and we might have three doors on another building. And some of them might be electronic locks. Some of them might be keypads. Uh, some of them might be fingerprints. Some of them might be uh, skeleton keys that you use. Um, so they, they might have, and these analogies all break down, of course, but anyways, if we're creating a method uh, on child ch on children, they may need to do a, a different types of uh, code in order to do that. But I need to make sure that there is a way for these to lock doors. So let me show you something. Let's go ahead now and let's create another class. And we're going to call this class uh, house, okay? And this class is going to extend uh, structure because it is a structure. Um, and what I want to do here is, um, well, I'm just going to do that for now. And then right below here, what we're going to do is we're going to create the house. So it's equal to a new house. And then we need to give it an address. So we'll say 123 Main Street. So that's where it's built. Okay. Um, so what I want to do here is let's go ahead and do uh, show you why you would do this with, an, with something called abstraction. What I can do is say, hey, look, buddy, if you're going to extend me, if you're going to be my child, then you're going to... I need to make sure that you have a way to lock the doors, okay? So instead of us putting code inside of this locked door, what we can do is declare this class an abstract class, 
okay? And then we can put, um, right here we can say abstract, and then instead of, we would get rid of the body because it doesn't need a body, and we would just do that. So now what happens is this house, it extends this abstract class, but it doesn't have this function locked doors. So let's see what happens. Let's go to abstraction. And now we can see that the class house contains one abstract method and must therefore be declared abstract or implement the remaining methods. So it's looking for the method lock doors. Okay? So it does the same thing pretty much uh, right here as our interface. It's saying, hey, you have to have lock, lock doors. But in addition to that, I can do additional logic in here like a constructor or have other um, methods. So let's, and I'll show you why in a minute or how, uh, because you don't want to de redeclare uh, anything that you don't need to because you don't want to repeat code. But in this instance, we know that locked doors is going to be different for each one of our structures. So uh, if I say public function, lock doors and I'm going to say this uh, doors locked is equal to true. That's what's going to happen if you call that. So now if I go and refresh we don't have an error anymore and that's because now our house it extends this abstract class and we fulfilled the promises inside that abstract class. We've said hey this thing needs uh, a method called locked doors. But let's say there's other things that are going to be the same for each one of our each one of our structures. And so let's say that would be um, turn on lights. They all just have a light switch, okay? So now we can give this another property called uh, lights on. We'll say false. So we can give it another inside the parent class or the abstract class. We can say public function uh, uh, toggle lights. And toggle lights is going to, it's going to say this uh, lights on is equal to not this lights on. So what this will do, if this is a boolean, this is going to say, hey, what's the opposite of false? Well, it's true. So it'll go back and forth. If I run it again, it'll say, oh, that's true. What's the opposite of true? Well, that's false. And it'll set that to false. So that's how you can toggle booleans. You can just put a not in front of it. Okay. Um, but this now is available to me on the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo house lights on and then we'll do uh, a break tag and then uh, let's go here and refresh the page house lights on well we can't echo that because it's a boolean so let's just um let's actually just var dump that just so we can see what's going on there And then what we'll do is we will echo a break tag underneath that. All right, so now let's refresh that. So now you can see that we're getting a boolean of false because the lights are off. But if after that I call house and I say lights on, and then we do the same thing where we... Uh, I'm going to copy those two lines and then we'll var dump again. Uh, oops, it's not called lights on, it's called toggle lights. Man, I'm tired. Okay, so if we refresh now, Had a typo there. So now, uh, first, it, it starts off with false, and then we run this toggle method, and it's true. And that's kind of what you would expect 
But I want you to pay attention that this toggle lights method is not defined in the uh, house class. It's actually defined in the logic and everything is defined in the abstract class. Now notice it doesn't have the word abstract before. If it did, that would be a problem. But we, an abstract class allows us to, to actually build a class that we can extend with children and we can define a lot of the logic, but we can also create a promise and say, hey, anything that extends this has to uh, implement, it has to have uh, a function called lock doors. Okay? Now, that's what you would use an abstract class for. Now, the thing is, it, um, the downside to an abstract class is I can't instantiate just an abstract class on its own. So what do I mean by that? Let's just go ahead and let's just try to instantiate a plain structure. And that's, we'll say a new uh, structure. We'll pass in our address. So we'll say 555 um, Apple Court. All right. And if I go and refresh, we're gonna get an error. So we got a fatal error. It says it cannot instantiate an abstract class structure. So um, the difference between a parent class, a normal parent class that's not abstract, is you can you can instantiate the parent or the ch child class, but an abstract class allows us to define logic and properties and everything else, and also make promises to make sure that anything that extends it implements it, but we can't instantiate it directly because it's an abstract class okay so I just I'm gonna comment this out and we'll put another comment above here and we'll say cannot instantiate an abstract class you must extend it okay so you must have a subclass that extends it uh, to use this structure and in some cases, this makes total sense to do. What's cool about this is now, since I have all this stuff here, uh, any type of other structures I want to build in my in my software, um, is, as soon as I extend them, any sort of abstract method is going to say, hey, buddy, hold on. In order to extend me, you need to have all these methods. And then you know that all of your... Um, child classes are going to function properly and have all the functionality that they need to have to do their jobs. Okay, This is a way that you can protect yourself in the future uh, from making mistakes and forgetting functionality that needs to exist in, in a child class and, and you can prevent bugs and things like that. Uh, and also you, this is a way to let other developers know who may be working on your code that hey you can extend this and have this functionality, but you need to include all of these things, okay? So that is abstraction, and uh, you might have to watch this video a few times. Um, I know it took me a little while to get the difference between interfaces and abstract classes and why you would use those, but um, if you watch this a few times, guys, I think you'll get it, and I hope that you do. If you don't, you can still get started with object-oriented programming. Uh, without using interfaces and abstraction, but at some point, uh, especially working with a team, you're going to want to know that these exist and how they work. So just come back to this then and look at it again and get yourself uh, familiarized with it. But I think most of you guys are going to be smart enough to understand this. Um, so guys, if you like this video, go ahead and comment, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for the next video. Uh, in the next video, I think I think what we've done is we've kind of covered all the basics of object-oriented programming. There's other things that we could talk about, but I think we covered enough of it to get you going. Um, so we're just going to do a little bit of a, a recap in the next video. We're going to finish out the front end of our website and go ahead and add our object-oriented pages to the front end site. And we'll do a short outro and uh, let you guys go ahead and move on to uh, now that you'll have uh, knowledge of all of you know the basic syntax of PHP you can start using it to program things and so I will recommend that you just start building a project now that you know the syntax alright guys well I will see you in the next video we'll talk soon